Today I am building this really cool looking small subwoofer with a Tang Band 5 inch subwoofer driver and a Dayton Audio passive radiator. This video is sponsored in part by JLC PCB. A few months ago I designed and built uh, these small spherical speakers. Um, it's a 3D printed speaker. Uh, and uh, it uses a Lavoche 3 inch uh, full range driver. Uh, these drivers are excellent um, and they have quite high, high power handling as well. Um, so, if you want to see how I um, uh, or how I bought these, you can go to the card, I think it's uh, top right, um, where I'll put a link to uh, this project. Uh, you can also click the link in the description below. So these only go down to about 120 hertz. Um, I've been using these on my desktop um, to, uh, you know, as monitor speakers for the last couple of months, and they really do sound incredible. Um, I paired them with a, a Relic 2.1 amplifier, um, which allows me to uh, uh, give these a flat frequency response using the built-in DSP function or dig digital uh, signal processing function. So these only go down to about 120 hertz. Um, so we have to fill in that bottom registers of the base with a subwoofer. Uh, now I designed this little small enclosure. Um, this is 3D printed uh, in a SLA process from resin uh, by JLC PCB. Um, and I must say the quality is absolutely excellent. This is a one piece print, which is quite amazing. Um, I've designed it so that it's got supporting um, F uh, uh, fins or supports in the on the inside as well um, so for a one piece print this is absolutely quite amazing um, I think it's about a three millimeter outside wall thickness um, and the flanges where I'm going to be mounting the loudspeakers is about I think five or six millimeters um, the design is based around the Tang Band W5 subwoofer it's a really small drive unit uh, but it provides excellent uh, bass response. Um, in a little bit of a large enclosure, you can easily go down to the mid 30s uh, with this driver. Um, it's really excellently engineered and I've used it in many projects before. Um, pairing this with uh, the Tangman W5 is a Dayton Audio 6.5 inch passive radiator. It's got an aluminium cone. Um, so in this enclosure, uh, this is not going to give me crazy low bass. Um, I've tuned it so that it will go down to, you have a minus 3 dB point of around uh, the high 40s to let's say about 50 hertz. Um, so it's not crazy low, but it's more than adu uh, adequate for a desktop system. And I think it's going to work very well with these eyeball 3D printed speakers. Um, so I will, uh, I'll still be using the Aurelic 2.1 amplifier uh, together with the desktop speakers and this uh, subwoofer. Um, and we can then also use the DSP function to create a suitable crossover point between the subwoofer and the desktop speakers. And then we can further use the DSP uh, to tweak the overall frequency, frequency response so that we can get that as flat as possible um, across the frequency range. So you can go to the JLC, uh, JLC PCB website um, and you can go get a quotation for printing this out of SLA resin. Um, of course it will be a little bit more expensive than doing this yourself at home on an FDM printer using something like PLA. Um, but this is printed as one piece which is actually quite amazing and like I've said before the quality is, is first rate, it's fantastic. Um, and it's quite a sizable print so they can actually print a lot bigger um, on their machines. Um, this is actually quite average sized. Um, so I will provide uh, bolt plans and also in those bolt plans I will have SDL files uh, where the subwoofer enclosure is split into two parts so you can print on your FDM printer one part uh, or one half and then you can print the other half and you can glue the two together to get the final enclosure. So all the uh, files for um, this project as well as the eyeball projects that I, that I did a few months ago uh, is available as build plans on my website at soundlab.net um, so click the link in the description below 
Because of the 3D printing process we have uh, and the SDL file, uh, the surface of this print is slightly faceted. Um, but um, that can actually be sanded smooth very, very easily. So I've done a little section over here and it's really as smooth as a baby's bottom. So um, I'm going to continue now just to sand the rest of the enclosure and get rid of those facets. Um, and really this is quite a simple project. Once you've got the 3D print um, and done a little bit of sanding, most of the work is actually just finishing this enclosure um, in whichever way you want. I'm of course going to be doing the same as what I've been doing with, uh, that I've, what I've done with this uh, desktop speaker, this eyeball desktop speaker. Um, I'm going to be uh, covering this with a filler primer um, and then sand with something like a 600 grit water paper until I get a really nice smooth surface without any imperfections. Um, I'm then gonna uh, give it a gloss black coat um, and once I've done that uh, I can use the graphite powder to give us this really incredible um, sort of like metal look finish. Ordering a 3D print from JLC PCB is quite easy. You just add your 3D file uh, or your SDL file um, and then you get a, a number of options. Um, so I'm selecting just SLA resin, uh, but you've got nylon, metal, uh, other FDM plastic or uh, SLS nylon. Um, I'm uh, selecting uh, SLA resin, uh, a 900R resin. Uh, which is uh, just a normal um, standard resin that's good for most purposes. Uh, it's a natural white as printed. Um, I've selected uh, to have it sanded just so that the surface is a little bit more clean. Um, <clears throat> and it provides you with a price. So this is a really, really easy process and you have many, many options to choose from. Um, and the delivery of this is really very, very quick. As you can see here, the turnaround time for building the print is around 48 hours. And um, I think it was probably about a week and, you know, after I placed my order and uh, I had it delivered to my doorstep. So it's really quick uh, process and the quality is really, really um, excellent. Uh, you can also click on the model uh, that will take you to a page where you can just view your model um, <clears throat> just to make sure that everything is correct and that this is what the print will look like. Um, so that's another nice feature that you can uh, make use of. So if you want to uh, have uh, something uh, printed um, for prototyping or for personal use or for something that you're designing, um, <clears throat> go to JLC uh, PCB, um, select the 3D printing option, uh, go upload your file, get an estimate from them, um, and um, <clears throat> a week later you'll have the products in your hand. So thank you JLC PCB for uh, uh, sponsoring this video. Let's get back to building the subwoofer. So I'm using 180 grit sandpaper just to get rid of those facets on the surface of the enclosure. Also of the very fine um, sort of like layer lines that you can feel when you run your, your nail across the actual uh, surface of the speaker enclosure, which is a result of uh, the 3D printing, just printing in, in layers. Uh, so we're just sanding that so that it's nice and smooth and then we can go over and we can uh, use a filler primer just to get a nice smooth finish on the surface. You want to apply a nice even layer of the filler primer. Uh, I just start off a first coat, uh, which is just sort of like a, a light coat. Um, and then I'll leave it for about five to 10 minutes to dry. Um, and then I'll apply another coat and uh, if I'm not happy with uh, the application I might apply a third coat as well. Uh, but just try and get it as even as possible um, and we can get a fairly thick uh, a, a layering on there that we can then sand back um, and get a nice smooth finish.
Now that I've got a good coat of filler primer on the enclosure and I've let it set uh, properly, I can use the 600 grit water sandpaper um, and just sand that smooth. Um, if you do sand through, um, you know, the filler primer, what you can do, uh, or if you think that there might still be imperfections uh, after you've given it a good sand with a 600 grit of water paper, you can apply another uh, layer of uh, filler primer um, and then sand it back again until that um, surface is really, really smooth without any imperfections. The gloss black paint is probably the most trickiest to apply because you really want to get this uh, perfect. Um, so you want to get a really perfect uh, black gloss finish on the surface so that you can get the best possible uh, finish when you apply the graphite powder. Um, so I start with a sort of a thin layer or just like a dusting of the gloss paint. And then I'll leave it for five to ten minutes to dry and then I'll come back and I'll apply a thicker layer of the gloss black paint. Before we continue any further, let me show you the drawings I made of the enclosure in Onshape. Uh, the first one is the one piece enclosure. And then um, the second one are the two halves of um, the enclosure made in two pieces. So we have the bottom half and then we have a top half that you can then print on an FDM printer and then just glue together to make up the, the complete enclosure. Once the gloss black paint is completely dry and glossy, I can apply the graphite powder. I am using graphite powder by Creta Color and will leave an affiliate purchase link in the description below. I have tried one or two other brands, however this one works best and guarantees me the results I'm looking for. The powder is applied with a cotton pad and rubbed into the paint until a consistent shiny finish is achieved. Um, it could it really couldn't be more simple um, as long as your gloss black paint is as shiny and smooth as you can get it. The next step is to fit the speaker binding posts in place and I start by soldering the speaker wire to the binding post tabs. Since the holes for the binding posts are already made during the 3D printed process, the binding posts are inserted through the holes, the tabs fitted and a nut screwed in place to secure it. I'm using crimp tabs here to attach the other end of the wires to the subwoofer speaker terminals but it can also be soldered directly to the speaker terminals and is a better option. Some self-adhesive weather strip is applied to the subwoofer flange, I did this off camera and then it's secured to the enclosure with four screws. Polyfill or Dacron is stuffed into the enclosure from the remaining open side which helps with damping the enclosure and eliminating any standing waves. However, this should already mostly be mitigated by the round shape of the enclosure. A weight must be added to the back of the passive radiator to tune it to the right resonance frequency that was modelled during the enclosure design. In this case, it is approximately 15 to 20 grams, which theoretically gives a minus 3 dB point of 45 hertz. The weight is made up of a few washers and screwed in place with a bolt that comes with the passive radiator in the box. The passive radiator already has a gasket applied to the flange, so mounting it is easy with just 5 screws. I 
I'm using the same 3D printed stand as with the eyeball speakers, this time just a bit bigger. This keeps the round subwoofer in place securely and fits in nicely with the eyeball speaker design. Uh, the stand is printed with a Whitfield PLA, however any PLA will do. Uh, the bumps on top of the four legs are printed in TPU, which is a slightly soft and flexible plastic. As mentioned before, I will be using the Aurelic 2.1 amplifier with DSP function and ACP workbench software to create a low pass filter at 150Hz for the subwoofer and a high pass filter for the eyeball desktop speakers. This gives us a very good integration between the two. Above is a near field frequency response with the baffle step compensation applied before implementing the crossover at 150Hz. All the DSP files will be included in the build plan for the subwoofer as well as the eyeball speakers to give you a very good integrated desktop system that really is excellent in terms of performance. ACP Workbench is available for $20 on the Relic website. I'll leave a link in the description below. I love these speakers and the way they look. It fits beautifully on my desktop. To build a set for yourself, go purchase the build plans on my website at soundblab.net. Thank you all for watching and please consider to support me further on Patreon or via YouTube membership where I post behind the scenes footage and discuss my upcoming projects. I will put links in the description below. Subscribe, like and comment below and until next time, adios. Let's take a listen to the system in action. Now